Hi, hello, Banakam, and welcome back to at another episode on Little Slav YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see about the JSR two two three post processor in Apache J meter. So this post processor is a versatile component that allows us to execute custom code after a sampler request has been sent and this can be particularly useful for performing additional actions extracting information from the response or modifying response data so in this video we will see with few examples on how to use the JSR223 post processor so the first example is using the JSR223 post processor for assertions and validation so I will show you how to use it for assertion and validation so before that I have a script here so this script will do a sign in to the JPEG store application so since it will take a lot of time I have already recorded it and before we move on to the video this is me your Shangam I welcome you all to let us like the channel if you have not subscribed to our channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and now let's go to the video so let me clear the scripts the results and then let me run an execution let me select the html options here and here you can see i've gone through the pages that i have signed in and then i have signed out of the signed out of the application so the first example which is the assertion and validation so i'm going to use or i'm going to show you the how to use the jsr223 post processor to add custom validation logic by writing a script that checks the response for specific conditions so if the conditions are not met we can mark the sample as failed so however what i'm going to do is here i have the the text which is welcome wrong so we're going to just check whether I have logged into the application with the right username and password. So for example, you can you are running a huge number of user load test, and in some scenarios you would have some invalid username and password, and they will actually create some results. So this actually this step in fact will save you a lot of time and money. Because the moment you find it's not valid, that automatically that particular transaction can be exited and it can move to the next iteration. So in fact, this actually helps in a, in many ways. The JS JS two three post processor, and this one we have got it in the zero four underscore one four two transaction. So let me go to the transaction here, and I will add the post processor. So to add the JS two three two two three post processor, you'll have to go to the add, and then the post processor. And then we have the JSR223 post processor and here is the script window and I have chosen Groovy as my language and let me take you through the script. So here I have the script, the first line which is the getting of the response data. So here I have got, I'm getting the response data into a string. And then the second line, which is I'm defining the expected value. So here in the response, so once the user logged in, automatically there will be a welcome message. So I can even remove this example here. So just I'm giving welcome as the expected text or the expected value. And then I'm adding the next line which is the sampler result object so here i'm getting the sampler result object and then i'm setting up the condition so if the value exists in the response then i will get a success message and in case if it failed then i'll get a failure message that the value is not present in the response so this is a very quick and easy example so let me save this let me clear the response and I'm starting the execution. So let me go back to the viewers tree and let's wait for the scripting to get completed. So here you can see there are no errors. So which means we have got the validation. So when you're running a huge load test, you would 
if everything goes fine then you would not experience any error so let me just change this value and I'll show you what happens so in case if I'm just removing an E and let me run it again here let's go back to the viewers history and let's wait for the execution to get completed so in the in the if block I have missed bracket so here I have added the bracket and then when I have when I execute the script again which is the JSR223 post processor let's see how does it work so here yeah you can see that since I have changed the value which is the value which is not in the response so I have got the error so now we will move on to the next example which is the second example so what is the second example or what is the use of the JSR223 post processor is the data extraction so we will see how to use the data extraction as part of the JSR223 post processor so for that let me go to the previous request here before that let me disable this and let me go to the previous post processor which is the one for one and let me add the JSR223 post processor and this one as I told you this is used for data extraction so we're extracting values from the response data and we can store them in a variable for later use and let me start let me give the entire step which I have already created for this example so here is like the previous example so we are getting the entire response into the string and then I'm using a regular expression to extract the content of the welcome def. So here I've used the regex using which I'm extracting the content of the welcome div. So we have different divs. So in this I'm using the welcome div and then I'm matching the value based on the welcome pattern, which is the welcome pattern which I have exp expected uh, exp I mean regular expression in this statement and then I'm checking if the pattern is found so if the pattern is found then I get the extracted welcome content if it is not there then I'm getting a different response which is the content is not found in the response so let me save this let me clear the log and I'm running the script again and we can see that in the results at the bottom of the log screen So here you can see the extracted welcome content which is welcome raw that's based on this example here so as I have already mentioned so the value from the div id has been extracted and it's been taken and displayed in the log info so this is how we can do the data extraction this can be used in a very useful ways where you can extract the values and you can use it in the coming requests the next request and now we will see the third example so the third example we will try is the custom logging so we can write custom log messages or debugging information to gmeter logs or to external files to help with the debugging of performance analysis and for that let me disable this and let me add another post processor again another post processor just yes or two to three post processor and let me give you the example code which i have created for this and here you go let me explain you so here i have used the jsoup library which actually helps to extract the information from the past html so in case even if you are using this particular jsr223 post processor you can very well import the jsoup because it's it's a more of a very highly designed library which will help you with the JSR223 post processor and I'm using again the language as Groovy and when I run this script again so I'm just starting the script and let me again expand the log bar because you can see the results here so here you can see the welcome message the welcome ram and then the sidebar content so now i'll take you through the code so here i have extracted the values 
using the doc dot select for the welcome context content sorry and then for the sidebar content so the first one is the from the welcome content select messages and the second one is the sidebar content messages so through which we can extract the values very well and that's how as i already mentioned you this jsr223 post processor is used for custom logging as well and now let's see the last example which is the modifying of sampler results so what kind of modification or what kind of modifications can we try is can add the timestamp at the end of the result or of the log so that we can add some extra extra values or in case if we if we want to get some timestamp and we have to use it as part of the script we can do it or if, in case if we want to change the format of the timestamp we can even do that so let me first disable this one and then let me add the new jsr223 post processor for this and here i have the code so let me just paste it for you and i'll explain the code what does it do so i'm extracting the date libraries the simple date format and the date util dot date libraries and then i'm getting the current response data of this particular response and then i'm getting the current timestamp and once i get the timestamp i format the timestamp based on my recommend so in case if you want to have it in a different format like mm dd yy then we can change it and here i have added the timestamps in fact it's just like the half minute and the seconds so in case if you do not want that you can remove it or in case if you want just the hour and the minute you can change it or even the milliseconds by adding an extra parameter to the value and then finally at the end i'm appending the response to this particular value so that they will be part of your response so now let me clear it save and i'm running the results for you so in the view results tree let's wait for a few more seconds and here let me expand the log see you can see here the request has been passed and the response has come here and then finally at the end you can see the format of timestamp which is added at the end of the extracted response so this is how the jsr223 post processor is used in fact there are like many other advantages of using this we can modify the sampler results and we can even use this particular jsr223 post processor for scripting protocols which are not supported by jmeter you can use it effectively because if most of the times we might not get or we might not be lucky to use protocols which are supported by jmeter in some scenarios where in case if we are here yeah, if we need to do some scripting for protocols so we we can uh, which which basically are not directly supported by jmeter but has java libraries available so we can use the jsr223 post processor to write custom scripts to handle communication with that protocol and in case in some of the scenarios you can use them for performance monitoring so if by integrating custom performance monitoring code to gather additional metrics during the test execution so the overall summary of this jsr223 post processor is it supports multiple scripting languages such as groovy javascript ruby and others so groovy is a popular choice due to its concise syntax and powerful features just keep in mind that while the JSR223 post processor provides flexibility, it's essential to use it very carefully because a poorly written script can impact the performance of your test. So always test and validate your scripts thoroughly before using them in a highly or in a high load test environment. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Asin Shanmugam and Little Slaw.